What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Trey Codes. As always, my name is Trey Hope, and I'm very happy to see you here for another video. Today, I'll be going over a package that's pretty popular today, and you probably can't really make an app without hearing something related to it. What I'm talking about is in-app purchases. So the name of the package itself is in-app purchase, and it deals directly with how to charge your customers in the app for digital content that you provide. I've done a video in the past on a third-party API related to something similar, and it was called Revenue Cat. So I just wanted to throw it out there that I highly suggest you check out that video first um, because it deals directly with in-app purchases as well. Just think of Revenue Cat as a more robust way to deal with purchases, while this package is a little bit more, um, a little more simplistic. So basically, I'll just be going over the functionality that it provides and how you can actually start charging your customers today in your app. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so the first thing you want to do is go to the app store and select the app you're working on. So I'll go ahead and select Trey's demo app right here. And then on the side menu, there's an option for manage under in-app subscriptions. So this is where we're, this is where we will add our subscription. So you see where it says in-app purchases, we want to click this plus symbol, and then we want to go ahead and select the purchase we want to create. So since it's a subscription, we want to select one of the bottom two. Um, the top two are for products. So this is for like Candy Crush, if you're buying uh, extra, um, extra items or something in the game that you that you can only use once and that you have to keep buying or if it's like a permanent release of like a, a secret map on candy crush that you just pay for once and you have it for a lifetime but that's besides the point the bottom two are subscription items so we'll select auto renewable subscription which means that this subscription automatically renews every month versus not renewing where the customer would have to resubscribe to keep using the subscription so uh Select auto renewable, create, and then we want to give it a reference name. So we'll just call it my demo plan. And then the product ID is how we identify it in the app. So I usually just go all caps uh, with the reference name again. And then we'll add it to the demo group, which is just a group of plans that I made earlier previously. Uh, but it'll essentially be any plans that you have. So if you have like gold, silver, and bronze plans, you will put them into a group. So we'll add this to the demo group, hit create. All right, so now we are in my demo plan. It just needs a little bit more information that way it can um, do everything that it needs to once we actually use it in the code. So we need to select the duration. We'll just say one month. Um, then we wanna add a price. Let's we'll save on that. This is where we'll select the price. So we'll just say $9 to use this plan, $9.99, all right. So now it's $9.99 and well, you know, not $9.99 everywhere, but I guess it's the equivalent of $9.99 everywhere, something like that. So yeah, we'll hit create. Uh, it says that the price has been created. So we got our starting price right here. You can see that. All right, so now go back to my demo plan, hit save. All right, now we need to add a localization. Um, this is to provide a display name and description for your in-app purchase. And they show that in the app store. So I'm just gonna go ahead and go with English, subscription display name, um, we're going to say my demo plan and with this plan, uh, you get special benefits. I don't know. <laughs> you get, you get some cool tickets. Yeah. With this plan, we get tickets. All right. So now we have to come down here and finish it off. We need, it needs one screenshot that this is only view when they're reviewing it. So it's not even a screenshot that they'll see in the app. This is just when they go to review your plan, they need to see an image of it 
for this demo i'll just use a, a gold background terrible screenshot but just for demo purposes and then we'll have some information in here that says like um i never really know what to say for this this plan is awesome yeah don't try this but for demo purposes it will make it work so now that we got all the information we hit save all right and so now everything's there but we just have to submit it with the next um, app version so that actually takes a, like time to review so for this example i'm going to go ahead and switch to another app that already has approved purchases in them so this is essentially how you set it up and then in the next video i'll go ahead and show you how you use it in an app that already has in-app purchases enabled on it you also need to add a sandbox tester this will allow us to use a fake account when dealing with purchases in the app so to create one all you need to do is come here uh, you need to select user and access from the main menu of app store connect then select the plus sign and then just enter in some information right here real simple and then you can use this account um, to use fake purchases so i'll drop a link with more information on how to access that but just know that you need to provide one um, by the time you get to the app now for ios we need to enable in-app purchases in the settings for the actual app itself so um, here I opened up Xcode. This is when I want to deal directly with the iOS aspect of the app. Um, you would use um, Android Studio or um, another IntelliJ framework possibly to open up Android. But this is Xcode for iOS. So you need to go to Runner. Select Runner. Um, and then I believe... Uh, yes, yeah, Signing and Capabilities. So here is where you'll, you could add things like push notifications or in-app purchases. You would just click uh, the plus button above, which is, oh yeah, I'm tripping. Here we go. So they've got a bunch of different things, maps, network extensions, personal VPN, wallet. Um, and I'm not too sure about all these other ones, but the main the main ones that I usually use in my apps is push notifications and in-app purchase. All right, so now we're ready to actually um, get into the Flutter coding part. So the first thing you wanna do is make sure that you have the in-app purchase package inside your pubspec.yaml file. And as always, you can run the command Flutter add in-app purchase to go and get that most recent version. So then once we have that, we want to come over to our demo page. Um, I have everything um, mapped out pretty much, but I'll just go over um, each function and then each UI component that we'll be using um, for better explanation. So first, um, we want to import some packages. Uh, we need the async package because we have some await functions in here. Uh, the Cupertino and material packages are for the UI aspect. Um, we also need the in-app purchase package and then the INTL package, which allows us to um, utilize daytime objects. So down here we have our actual class variables. Um, we have an instance to that in-app purchase object, uh, which is right here. Um, then we also have a product ID, which is the product ID we specified when creating a subscription on the App Store. So uh, previously it was called my demo plan, but um, with plans, it takes time to approve, and I don't think it would have got done in time for this video that I'm recording. So I'm using another project where the plan was already approved, and that plan was called Premium Plan. I know that was a lot. If we keep going, we have a available Boolean value. That'll just let us know if this app can actually use the store um, for the App Store or the Google Play Store. And we have a list of products, which are product details, and then a list of purchases, which are uh, a list of purchases, uh, purchase details um, related to the purchases we made so far in the app. And then we also have a stream subscription of type list purchase details, which essentially says that we'll be listening for uh, any updates related to purchases. So whenever we get a new event, like an error or a successful purchase or a pending purchase, 
this stream will listen for a new list of details related to those purchases. So down here in the init state function, we want to um, actually create a, uh, we want to get that stream uh, of list purchase details. So we'll create a variable called purchase updated, um, which is essentially just going to be assigned from this purchase stream object on the in-app purchase. Then we want to assign our subscription object to that purchase updated object um, when it listens for those updates. So the subscription now becomes all of this. So whenever we get new purchase details, we want to rebuild the widget. So we'll call set state. And then we want to add all those purchases to our purchase object, as well as call a function called listen to purchase updated um, that I'll explain in a little bit, but it's going to take in all those purchase details. And then there is an on done and on error clause when using the listen function. Um, and in both of those, we'll just close the subscription for now. You always want to close the subscription because it's bad practice to keep a subscription open once you're done using it. And it can cause to um, it can cause some errors in your app later on if you don't do that. So then we'll call this initialize function after we set up that subscription. And I'll explain what the initialize function does here shortly. Um, down here in our dispose, we want to make sure we get rid of that subscription as well. So we'll call subscription cancel. And then down here we have the initialize function. Um, the first thing we're going to do is call the is available function on the in app purchase object to let us know if the uh, if the store is available um, and we'll just update that variable right here then we want to also get the products that we have provided on the app store right now there's only one subscription so it will only be one product which is this product ID I'm passing in right here and as you can remember the product ID was premium plan so we are going to get the premium plan as our product and we just want to rebuild the widget again. So we'll call set state and assign that product to our uh, class variable of products. Then we go down to the listen to purchase updated function. Um, this is going to be called whenever we have an update of purchase details. So what we want to do is um, we want to loop through all of those purchase details. And then based on their status, we want to uh, do different things. So if we have like a list of purchases that we've made in the past, we would go through this switch statement and based on their status, for example, if it's pending, then we would pop probably show some pending UI, um, maybe like a spinner or something like that. Um, if the status was purchased or restored, then we would probably want to do something like verify the purchase based on the details. And then if it's valid, go ahead and display the information for that purchase. But if it's not valid, um, handle the invalid purchase some other way. And then we also have an error clause uh, right here. So if the purchase had an error, we can print that error, log that error, send it to Crashlytics or something, as well as handle the error on the UI uh, side of things. Um, once we loop through all those purchase details, um, well, actually, while we're in each one, we want to check and see if the uh, pending complete purchase um, is true or not. Um, if it's pending, then we want to go ahead and complete it. That way, um, it can actually display the most accurate um, status that it's staying in. So it'll be complete once it comes back through here or uh, purchased or restored, I'm sorry. So then we have our get products function and what it takes is a set of string, which is the product IDs. Um, and it's going to query the product details um, on the in-app purchase object. So based on the IDs we pass it, it's gonna return some, pro uh, some products and we only have one product as mentioned before. So the response.product details is going to be our one subscription. Then we have a UI function that's going to uh, display what we see when we display our products. So since we have one product, it's just going to be a list tile that has the title as the product title, premium plan, and then the product price, which is that $9.99 we specified. Uh, and then the product description will be under it for uh, the subtitle. And then we'll have a button that will allow us to subscribe to that product. Then we also have a UI function for when we want to display a purchase that we made. Now, if the purchase has an error, then um, if it uh, if it does have an error, if it's not null, then we, we want to display the title of that error in the text. And then um, the status will say error uh, as the subtitle. Um, if it doesn't have an error, then that means that uh, we could possibly have a transaction date on that purchase. So from here, we'll create a nullable string called transaction date. And if the purchase status is purchased, we'll go ahead and fetch that transaction date uh, value off that purchase and then create a, uh, a, 
a date string um, formatted for that transaction date. So as you can see here, it's nullable. So it'll remain nullable unless the item was purchased. So when we get down here, we can run this operator to say, uh, first the purchase um, product ID, and then if this value is not nullable, specified by these two question marks, then we'll display this transaction date. If it is null, then we'll just display an empty string. And then under that, we'll have the status, which will say purchased. Um, yes, it'll say purchased or um, pending. Next, we have our subscribe function. This is where we pass in the product details, uh, which is the product. And then we create a purchase param object based on that product. Then we call in at purchase to buy a non-consumable and we pass in that purchase param. So as mentioned earlier, non-consumables are subscriptions, consumables are products. All right, now we can actually get into the build function of our demo page. So as you can see here, it's just a scaffold with an app bar that says in app purchase 1.08. Then we have our body and we're gonna call that available variable to determine if, if it is available, we'll display uh, a column that's going to have two parts to it. It's going to have one section, um, which is the first half, and it's going to have uh, an expanded object, expanded object that's going to display the current products as well as how many products we have, uh, calling that build product function. The second widget is going to be the second half below it that's going to be displaying past purchases uh, as well as how many purchases we purchases we have. Um, so as I said, if it's not available, it's not gonna display the column, but instead it's going to display a center with the text that says the store is not available. So this is essentially all the code that's needed for the demo page. Let's see what it looks like in the app. So with that, we conclude today's video. I hope you learned something in regards to in-app purchasing for your app. As I mentioned earlier, um, this was really just a simplistic version of using third-party API like Revenue Cat. So I suggest looking at both of these videos. Well, you've already seen this video, but see the previous video um, that I'll attach at the end of this one. And if this video was helpful to you, please like, comment, subscribe, and share as much as possible. Again, thank you so much for tuning in. I'll see you next time on Trade Codes.